So this morning we will sing first Kabi Habi Bolo, which is a song from Sharanagati by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Kabi Habi Bolo Se Kabe habi bolo se din amha Aparada goche shudanama ruchi Kripa bolo habi bolo se chanchar Aparada Gucci, Shudanama Ruchi, Kripa Bole Habi Bolo Re Sancha. Aparada Gucci, Shudanama Ruchi. Kripa Bale Habir Hidaye Sanchar Kabi Habi Bola Se Din Hamha Trina di Kahina, Kabidni Jemani, Samshudarid, Sahishnuta Guna Ridaye, San Rudaye Ani. Trina di Kahina, Kabini Jemani, Sahishnuta Guna Ridaye Teyani. Sakale Manada, Apani Amani, Hai Ashwati Bunhamara Sasar. Sakale manada apani amani hai ashwadi bon hamara sasar Dana janoar kobita sundari boli bona chahi deho sukkari Dana Janar Kobita Sundari Boli Bona Chahi Deho Sukkakari Janme Janme Dao Ohe Gora Hari Ahi Tuki Bhakti Charane Tomar Janme Janme Dao, Ohe Gora Hari, Ahe Tuki Bhakti Ridaye, Chanaye Tomar. Kari Te Shri Krishna, Nama Uparana, Pula kita de hop gad gad bachana. Pula 
Hari ke Shri Krishna nama ucharana pula kito deho gagadha bachana Bai banya be patu hai be sangatana Nirantara netri pabe ashrudar Bai banya be patu hai be sangatana Nirantara netri babi ashrudar Kabinabadwipe suradunitate Gora nityananda bolo nishkapate Kabinabadwipe suradunitate Gora Nityananda Bolo Nishkapate Nachi Agaya Berai Bochute Batulera Praya Chariya Bichar Nadia Paya Perai Bochute Batulera Praya Chariya Bichar Kabinityananda More Kori Daya Chare be mora vishayera maya Kabe nityananda more kori doya Chare be mora vishayera maya Iya mora nija chara nera chaya Na merhab te te bi adhikar Iya mora nija chara nera chaya Namer hatha te de bi adhikar Kini balu ti bo hari namarasa Namarasi mati bhoi bi bi basa Hini bolo te bo hari nama rasa Nama rasa mati hoi bibi basa Rasa rara sika charana parasa Hariya maji bora se ani bar Hariya 
Rasara Rasika Charana Parasa Korea Machi Borasi Aniba Kabiji Bejoya Hoi Bejoya Nijatsuka Brin Nija suka bully to Dina Ridaya Kabiji be doya, hoi be udoya Nija suka bully to Dina Ridaya Bakati binoda, Korea binoya, Shri Agnata hala, Kori be prachat. Bakati binoda, Korea binoya. Shri Agnata Hala Kori Be Prachar Kabi Habi Bolo Se Dinama Apara da Gucci, Shuda Namaruchi, Kripa Bole Habir Jaye Sancha. Kabe Habi Bolo Se Din Hama. Kabe Habi Bolo Se Din Hama. Please tell me, when will that day be mine? When my offenses will end and a taste for the pure holy name will be infused within my heart by the power of divine grace. Considering myself lower than a blade of grass, bringing the quality of forbearance into my heart, showing respect to all myself being freed from all false pride when will i taste the essence of the liquid nectar of the holy name wealth followers beautiful women as described in worldly poetry i do not want any such bodily pleasures o lord goranga Please give me unmotivated devotion to your lotus feet, birth after birth. When, while articulating the divine name of Sri Krishna, will my body be thrilled in ecstatic rapture, and my words be choked with emotion? When will... When will... Pal when will pallor and trembling occur? And when will streams of tears flow constantly from my eyes? 
When in the land of Navadweep, on the banks of the Ganges, will I run about bank will I run about bank in guilelessly calling out O Gora, O Nityananda, dancing and singing like a madman, giving up all mundane considerations. When will Lord Nityananda be merciful to me and release me from the illusion of worldliness, giving me the shade of his lotus feet? When will he allow me to enter the marketplace of the holy name? I shall buy and plunder the mellows of the name of Hari, and becoming thoroughly intoxicated with those liquid mellows of the holy name, I shall become stunned. By touching the lotus feet of the great souls who are able to relish those mellows, I will be constantly immersed in the sweet nectar of the holy name. When will there be an awakening of compassion for all fallen souls? And when will this Bhakti Vinod, forgetting his own happiness, with a meek heart, set out to propagate by humble entreaty the sacred order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Paeshu Vabadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Er Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 8, Prayers by Queen Kunti, Text Number 20. Tata. Paramahamsanam Muninam Amalatmanam Bhakti Yoga Vidanartam Katam Pashyema Hi Striya Tata Paramahamsanam Muninam Amalatmanam Bhakti Yoga Vidanartam Katam Pashye Mahistriya Tata Paramahamsanam Muninam Amalatmanam Bhakti Yoga Vidan Artam Katam Pashye Mahistriya Tata Paramahamsanam Muninam Amalatmanam Bhakti Yoga Vidan Artam Katam Pashye Mahistriya
Ladies, Tata, besides that, Paramahamsanam of the advanced transcendentalists, Muninam of the great philosophers or mental speculators, Amal Atmanam, those whose minds are competent to discern between spirit and matter. Bhakti Yoga, the science of devotional service. Vidana Artam, for executing. Katam, how? Pashyema, can observe. He certainly, striyaha, women. Translation, you yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service into the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit. How then can we women know you perfectly? Please repeat. You yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service unto the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit. How then can we women know you perfectly? Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Even the greatest philosophical speculators cannot have access to the region of the Lord. It is said in the Upanishads that the Supreme Truth, the Absolute Personality of Godhead, is beyond the range 
of the thinking power of the greatest philosopher. He is unknowable by great learning or by the greatest brain. He is knowable only by one who has his mercy. Others may go on thinking about him for years together, yet he is unknowable. This very fact is corroborated by the queen who is playing the part of an innocent woman. Women in general are unable to speculate like philosophers, but they are blessed by the Lord because they believe at once in the superiority and almightiness of the Lord. And thus they offer obeisances without reservation. The Lord is so kind that he does not show special favor only to one who is a great philosopher. He knows the sincerity of purpose. For this reason only, women generally assemble in great number in any sort of religious function in every country and in every sect of religion it appears that the women are more interested than the men this simplicity of acceptance of the lord's authority is more effective than showy insincere religious fervor Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanye Na Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadante Kam Bandeham Shri Gara Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Guran Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhanitamscha He Krishna Karna Sindhu Dhinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Queen Kunti is offering her prayers to Lord Shri Krishna Queen Kunti is describing one of the reasons why Lord Krishna descends to this world. That he descends to reveal himself to the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators. Because Lord Krishna cannot be known simply by philosophical speculation and simply by being an advanced transcendentalist, that is not the qualification to know the Lord. Srila Prabhupada said, the Lord is known by one who has his mercy. We have to get the mercy of Krishna. 
to know Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvikam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayantite. And then he says, Tesham ivanu kampartam ahamagyana jam tamaha nashiyami atma bhavasto jnana dipena bhashvataha. Krishna says, to those who are constantly devoted and who worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. And then he said, out of compassion for them, I dwelling in their heart, destroy the darkness of ignorance with the lamp of knowledge. So it's Lord Krishna who allows himself to be known. Otherwise, if Krishna does, if there's no material qualification by which we can know the Lord. The Lord, Prabhupada writes here, the Lord can understand the sincerity of the purpose. Who really wants to know Krishna? Who actually has genuine devotion? The actual qualification is devotion. It's not that we have to be a big scholar or a great mental speculator. And Queen Kunti is very humbly saying, how could we women know you? Queen Kunti is saying like this, but Prabhupada, on the other hand, Prabhupada turns it around and says that actually the women are more qualified than the men. And he said, you, you, we, and we, we can actually see in our Krishna consciousness movement, outside of India, we get much more women than we get men. Most of the devotees are women. And there's very, always less men in the other countries outside of India. Here in India, of course, we get a lot of men, and the ladies are less. But outside of India, it's the other way around. And it doesn't mean that because the women in the temple are less, that they're less devoted. Actually, the women are more devoted than the men. They have genuine humility, and they're often willing to do a lot of service. And Srila Prabhupada recognized that, and he gave equal opportunity for men and women in Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada went to the West, and he never thought women would come to the Krishna consciousness movement. But when Prabhupada was having his programs, just let me hold it. When Prabhupada was having his programs, women would come, the ladies would come, and they would want to also get initiation. And Prabhupada was at first surprised. But then, he allowed, he continued it. He allowed it, because he saw that in the Western countries, women have equal position. Prabhu, please. Prabhu, I don't need it. When women have equal position with the men, the women and the men generally mix quite freely in the Western countries. So Prabhupada saw that tendency there, and therefore he allowed women also to come to the Krishna consciousness movement, and he initiated them. And we see in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna himself recognizes also Women, he said, striho vaishas tata sudras te piyanti paramgatim. Mami parta vai prasritya ye pisu papa yonaya striho vaishas tata sudras te piyanti paramgatim. That even though one may be of lower birth, like women, sudra, and vaisha, they can attain the supreme destination because they are properly situated. So Prabhupada gave this opportunity that the ladies can also 
take up Krishna consciousness and they do a lot of service. When it comes to book distribution, at least in the countries uh, around the world, we see a lot of ladies are very, uh, very good in distributing books. They're very expert. They know how to sell books. Prabhupada was talking, the one lady from America, her name was Mula Prakriti. Mula Prakriti, she was a, a famous book distributor in the West. And she would distribute books in the airports to people. And so Prabhupada was talking to her and he was encouraging her. And Prabhupada was talking to her about salesmanship. And he was talking also about women, young girls. And Prabhupada talked about his own daughters and like that. Like that Prabhupada showed great affection for the ladies and encourage them in Krishna consciousness. So we don't discriminate between men and women. And here we see Queen Kunti. She's the most elevated, she's a great devotee. And she's offering wonderful prayers to Lord Krishna. And she's describing that it's so difficult for advanced transcendentalists even to know Krishna, right? There's a verse in the Brahma Samhita, Yashya Prabha Prabhavato Jagadanda Kotim Kotishvasesha Vasadati Vibhuti Bhinnam Tad Brahma Nishkalam Shabhutam Govinda Madip Right? Like, that even for the, the yogi, the muni, who travels at the speed of the mind, he can hardly approach the tip of the toe of the lotus feet of Govinda. That even if you're traveling at the speed of the mind, the muni pungavanam, right? The speed of the mind, how fast the mind can go, much faster than anything, any ordinary vehicle that we know. You may have jet planes that can fly across the planet, but the mind can go faster, the speed of the mind. And so the munis also, they may travel at the speed of the mind, but even then they cannot approach the tip of the toe of the lotus feet of Govinda. Because the, you cannot approach Krishna by any material means. The qualification to come to Krishna is devotion, bhakti. He can be known only by devotion. Bhaktya mam abhijanati yavam yas jasmin tattvata. Krishna said, only by devotion can I be understood. So when Krishna reveals himself to the devotee, he can understand the sincerity of the purpose. If somebody just simply wants to waste Krishna's time, then why should Krishna bother to reveal himself? Just like there's a story, there was one old lady. She was making her living by collecting dry wood in the forest. And she would collect all the dry wood, then she would take it to the market and sell it. And in this way she was able to maintain her life. So one day she had a big basket of wood on her head. And she dropped the basket. She tripped and the basket fell over and all the wood fell down. So what to do? She prayed to the Lord, Oh God, oh Krishna, oh Bhagavan, Please come, please help me. So the Lord appeared and he said, yes, what do you want? She said, can you help me put this wood back on my head? So, was that very intelligent thing to ask? Hmm? Help me put that load back on my head. That was her request. So sometimes people, you know, often people go to God but they just simply ask, like that woman, 
Help me put the load back on my head. Give me the burden of material life. What we should be asking the Lord, we don't ask for. We don't know what to ask God for. We're asking him, oh, give me home, give me wife, give me nice life by the sea, Om Jai Jagadish Hare. Yeah. Right? Sometimes we sing like that in the Hindu temples, you know. They sing the songs, but it's all, give me, give me, give me. Give me the burden on my head, right? <laughs> They're asking stupidly. And so these kind of prayers, these requests, they're not very pleasing to Krishna. Krishna is not so attracted by these people who come with all these prayers, what they want, requesting, give me this, give me that. No, that's not very pleasing. The Lord will not reveal himself to these kinds of people. The Lord, however, does reveal himself to those who have the sincere purpose in mind. Just as Queen Kunti, she's very humble, and she's praying, how can we women know you? She considers herself to be unqualified. But Srila Prabhupada is saying, that very mood of thinking oneself to be unqualified, that is the qualification to know Krishna. The more we consider ourselves to be low and fallen and unqualified, that is the actual qualification to come to know the Lord. But if we are thinking of ourselves that I am very qualified, then that, that will not be good. That's not going to help you to know the Lord. Therefore, Queen Kunji said, you come to reveal yourself to the hearts of these mental speculators and so-called advanced transcendentalists. There's a similar verse in the Mahabharata, which also appears in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which describes who actually knows the Lord and how you can know the Lord. Tarko pratishta shrutayo vibhina na savrishir yashya natam vibhinam. Dharmashya tadvam nihitam gohayam. Yes, right. Mahajano yenagata sapan. Tarko pratishta. Dry arguments are inconclusive. Just simply arguing about the nature of the absolute truth. That will not help us. And Shrutayo Vibhina. You may know the Shrutis. You may know the Vedic literatures very well. But Shrutayo Vibhina, the, the conclusions of the scriptures are often contradictory. It's difficult to know the Lord from the scriptures. In one place, they may say one thing about, they'll say the Lord is without form, and the other place they will say the Lord has a form. So it becomes bewildering. Does the Lord have a form or does he not have a form? Is the Lord transcendental or not? There are many things about Krishna which are difficult to understand. And similarly, the Vedic literature. It says in the Vedas, just like Ishopanishad, Tad ejati, tad naejati, tad dure, tad vantike, tad antarasya sarvasya, tadu sarvasya bhayata. The Supreme Lord walks and he does not walk. Huh? He walks and he doesn't walk. He's far away, but he's very near as well. What? Contradictions. He's within everything. But he is outside of everything also. So this is, this is the Vedas, the Upanishads from the Vedas. You can see the contradictions, the difficult. Therefore, 
Bhishma Dev in this verse from Mahabharata is it uh, Shrutayo Vibhina from the Shruti very difficult to know the absolute truth. Nasav Rishir Yashya Natam Bidbinam. The Rishis, the great sages, the great thinkers, they will come up with their thinking, their theory, and they will say one thing, and another Rishi will come and defeat it. And then another Rishi will come and defeat him. And in this way, they will never come to any conclusion. They're trying to find conclusion. They never get any conclusion. They just simply argue, and it goes on. This is Kali Yuga, age of quarrel, argument, arguing over little things. Nobody actually knows, but everybody claims to be an authority. And they think, I know, listen to me. And they say something, and then somebody else comes along and defeats that. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, before he revealed himself as a devotee, he was showing his pastimes in scholarship. And he was debating with so many other people there. Whenever he would meet the devotees, he would debate with them. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching logic. He was teaching Nyaya. So Vedanta Sutra is based on Nyaya, logic. This is, is all arguing. <laughs> the Vedanta, read the Vedanta Sutra, you get a lot of, it's quite confusing. Because it's Nyaya, it's logic. And logic, you present logic one way, you can pre present it another way. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would say one thing, and then he would defeat it, and then he would say something else, then he would defeat that, and in this way, go on. So this is the path of logic. The great sages, the rishis, they're all involved in that. And of course, you know, Keshava Kashmiri came there to Navadweep, and Lord Chaitanya debated with him. And he was a great scholar, he was a great student of Saraswati. He had the blessings of Saraswati. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu defeated him. And Keshava Kashmiri then understood that there was somebody above Saraswati. People worship scholars and they worship Saraswati. They should simply worship Lord Krishna or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they can get the ultimate blessings. So, the sages cannot give any real conclusion. So how to know what is the absolute truth? So therefore it is said, Dharma Shyatatvam Nehitam Guayam Mahajano Yenagatapatsapan That the absolute truth is hidden in the hearts of the pure devotees. You want to know the absolute truth? It's in the hearts of the pure devotees. How to understand it? Mahajano yena gata sapanta. You have to follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans. Then it can be understood. So Srila Prabhupada talks about how all different religions all over the world, the women are more religious. They're more pious. They're more devoted than the men. They're more, and they're more qualified to actually know the Lord. But we are often neglectful. We don't, we don't give the women so much opportunity. Nowadays, uh, just recently, one lady in the Krishna consciousness movement gave initiation. She's the first woman in our Krishna consciousness movement to accept disciples. Sometimes people ask, can women also be Diksha Gurus? So, Prabhupada explained that they can be, but it's not very common. It's not very common. It's a very rare woman who can take that kind of position. So in the past, there were ladies like Lord Nityananda 
he had two wives. So after Lord Nityananda departed, uh, Janava, his, one of his wives, she became a spiritual master. And she actually became the Acharya of the Sampradaya. So she took a, a, a very prominent role. But at the same time, she was very discreet. She did not put herself in front of everyone. But it was understood that she was a very elevated soul. And she was told, she was ordered by the Lord himself that she should accept disciples and she should initiate people. And she did give some initiations. And then there was another lady who was the daughter of Srinivas Acharya. Srinivas Acharya, of course, was, we said the other day, Srinivas Acharya was one of the students in Jiva Goswami's school. He had gone there to Vrindavan and he studied under Jiva Goswami. And he was one of the top students along with Shamananda Prabhu and Naratam Das. So the three of them were all very expert in music. They were all very expert musicians and they could sing beautiful kirtan. And Naratam, we know he wrote many beautiful songs. So Shamananda and Srinivas, Srinivas Acharya, he wrote the Goswami Astikam. And he, he was a very accomplished preacher also. So these three were prominent. So Srinivas, he, he married. Naratam never married. Shamananda also never married. But Srinivas married. And he, has a, he had a daughter. His daughter was called Hemalata Thakurani. So from her childhood, she had revealed herself to be a very special soul. And later on, she grew up as a woman. And she also accepted disciples. But it's not very common. So, while we give respect to the women, we have to understand there's certain uh, restrictions there. Just like women don't take sannyas. Now, there are some places where they do give women sannyas, where they put women in saffron robes. But that's not the Vedic culture. That's not Vedic at all. Uh, so women don't take sannyas. Why not? Because women should be protected. The, in the Vedic culture, women need to be protected. And protection should come when they're young girls, they're protected by their father. Later on, they should be married, and then they'll be protected by the husband. And then in old age, they will be taken care of by their child. So in this way, the woman is looked after and given protection. Not that they can become sannyasis and go traveling and preaching and doing things like that. That's not expected of women. But they do give lectures. They do give classes. They're scholarly people. We have a number of scholarly, scholarly ladies in our Krishna consciousness movement, and they write articles, if you read our magazine, Back to Godhead, and also we see many other publications, you see that ladies are also active in writing and publishing. And so they have the knowledge of Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, told Ramananda Rai that the birth, birth is not important. We don't discriminate against people is that they should know the science of Krishna. We, keep we, we give keep everyone equal opportunity. Just like in Mayapur, when we give classes, they will have also sometimes ladies give class. The ladies will also lecture because they have a number of very senior ladies there and they want to speak. And often the audience is more ladies than men. And so naturally, if you know a woman is speaking, you may not like to go to class. You don't need to go to class. But the ladies will like to come more. 
especially if it's a woman speaker, will attract more ladies to come and speak. Mm. So we have to recognize we don't we shouldn't discriminate against people on the basis of the body and give everyone a chance to speak on Krishna consciousness. If they know the science of Krishna, we should be willing to hear from them. And in Prabhupada's time, Prabhupada would do that. You can read. I was reading Shamsundar's Chasing Rhinos with Prabhupada, and he told about how Prabhupada was in Mayapur. And they had a ceremony for laying the foundation stone for the new temple. The temple which is coming up, the temple of the Vedic planetarium. So they had a big ceremony and they put the Ananta Shesha down in the ground. They had a big hole and Prabhupada went down the ground, put, came up. And Prabhupada's god brothers had all come. Many of his god brothers had come for the ceremony. So then Prabhupada decided who should give the lecture, who should speak. And they wanted one of his disciples to speak. Who did he ask to speak? He asked Malati to speak. Now Shamsundar was married to Malati at this time. So, he, so he's telling about it in the book and he said he was shocked. He was shocked. Prabhupada, there were sannyasis present. Prabhupada's sannyasis. There were senior men from Prabhupada's movement. But, and Prabhupada's god brothers were all there. And who does Prabhupada ask to speak? He asked Malati to speak to all the God, Prabhupada's God brothers and all the assembly of sannyasin. So, the, and what to say? I mean, this, this was Prabhupada's mood. He had that vision. He, he didn't discriminate against anybody. And sometimes, sometimes when they would have planned out programs, you know, they'd have big crowds of people. Sometimes, if, if Prabhupada would give a lecture, or if some Western-bodied man would give the lecture, people would all talk. They would all, you know, talk. They can be very noisy sometimes, you know. People are there, they're, and they, they sit, they don't listen, they just sit and talk to each other. So to get people to be quiet, Prabhupada would call one of the women, one of the Western women to come and give class. There was one Mariji, Hemavati, and Prabhupada would call her, Hemavati, come, come in. And as soon as she came, everybody became silent, you know. Everyone just froze and they're all looking and watching her. So th <laughs> this, this is, uh, Prabhupada would use women in that way sometimes. You know, he'd use them to... Now, get the people's attention, and just to get them to be quiet. But, of course, we have to, uh, Prabhupada also understood certain limitations are there. And we have to also understand that too, that there are limitations. That they have devotion, and then, okay, you have devotion, we know you have devotion, you know, but, uh, you know, Usually, uh, we have to, we don't give them too much managerial responsibilities. Although we do have lady on the GBC now, there's a couple of ladies there on the GBC, and you get ladies, temple presidents, big temples, they put a woman in charge of the temple. In some ways, it's convenient because they have more ladies. And if you put a man in charge, and he has to work with women all the time, it's not very good. But if you have a temple which is full of women, then put a woman in charge, you know, and then she can engage all the women much easier. But if you're a man, bunch of women, it's, it's not very easy. It's very difficult, very challenging. And we saw many times people who were in management that because they're working with women all the time, they get affected. So it's a problem. And so they find it easier to put, put women in charge, <laughs> let the women do. But in Prabhupada's time, 
there were some women, they tried to do something. They'd gone somewhere and they had arranged, arranged a Pandal program. And Prabhupada was pleased at first that they'd done something. But later on when he found out certain things which they'd done, then he was not pleased. <laughs> and he said, you see, this is a problem. He said, you let women do things and they, 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 they can't do so well as the men. But sometimes they like to do things, you know, they have that desire. Even in China they have a saying, men and women are equal. They say that, it's a propaganda slogan to encourage people to think that there's no difference between men and women. In Prabhupada's time, Prabhupada was preaching in America and there was a lot of talk about women's liberation. And Prabhupada was talking against it. He said this program of women's liberation, he said this is a program by men to exploit the women. He said, how can men and women be equal? The man doesn't get pregnant. Women are the ones who get pregnant and have babies, not the men. So how can you say they're equal? And Prabhupada was, and then Prabhupada even talked about the brain of the woman is smaller than the size of the brain of the man. And there are different times, different people. So Prabhupada was preaching on these points and it became controversial. At one time there was this one woman, she came in London to see Prabhupada. And it was a very cold day. And the woman came, she was wearing a mini skirt, you see. <laughs> and she came to see Prabhupada in the mini skirt. And she was talking to Prabhupada about Krishna consciousness and about the men, why they have to shave their heads. And Prabhupada explained to her, he said, shave the head means can have cool head. He said, better to have a cool head and warm legs <laughs> because she was wearing the mini skirt so her legs must have been very cold you know because England the cold wind and the rain and she's wearing a mini skirt so Prabhupada said yes the men shave their head they have cool head and warm legs better better to have cool head not to be hot-headed and cold legs. <laughs> uh, so Prabhupada had some very amazing, very wonderful different interviews and meetings with people discussing about women's liberation. He didn't, he didn't actually, in Prabhupada's time, he never appointed any women on the GBC. Even though there were qualified women there. Just like I said, Malati was qualified lady. Yamuna Maharaji was there. And this Hemavat, they were very, very elevated ladies. They were very good, you know, they could do everything. They could give classes, they could do everything. But Prabhupada never put them in, in any managerial position. Only later on, afterwards, manage, they got into managing. Maybe it was just it just had to happen because more women more women coming more ladies so to engage the women easier to have a woman in managing managing role but if men have to manage women all the time it's not very not very good for our krishna consciousness hmm. and so yeah at one point, uh, there were devotees chanting japa, and they said all the women should go in another room and chant japa. But Prabhupada said, no. He said, what is that? Said, the women can chant in the temple room as well as the men. A woman is like fire. So, the butter they put on the packet, store in a cool place. So Prabhupada said, all the brahmacharis we should put on their head, store in a cool place. Hmm. Keep the brahmacharis, in other words, keep
keep the brahmacharis away from the women. But if you mix the two together, it's like fire and butter. The butter will melt in the same way. If men are mixing too much with the women, then they melt. And so men are good, women are good, but keep a distance. So it's like we have the women here, we have the men here. So we recognize their devotees. We give them all facility for Krishna consciousness. At the same time, we, we're careful to avoid any uh, problems. Okay, are there any questions? Yes, Prabhu? But Mariji doesn't let her Prabhu buy a book. Yeah, so what to do? <laughs> you have to pick a Prabhu whose Mariji is not there. <laughs> yeah, women will be like that. The materialistic woman. <laughs> It's a problem. That problem is always there. I was distributing books one time, and after I, you know, I, I distributed a book to one man, and he gave me a nice donation. But a little while later, this woman came by on a motor scooter and got off and came to me, and she asked me. She said, "She said, did you sell a book to my husband?" <laughs> And she said, you know, he said, she said, I have three children at home, we have no money. My husband gave you all of his money. <laughs> you know, she said, please take the book back, give me back the money. <laughs> what could I do? You know, I had to give her back, the, give her the book, give her the, the money, take the book back. <laughs> Sometimes these things happen. You know, women are more conscious of this. They're more conscious of their economic condition. Men come and, you know, a young woman comes to him, the, the man, oh, yeah, you'll give money to her. The men, more free. And so find the men without the women. Far away from, keep far away from the women. That is book distribution, that problem is there. Actually, there was one devotee, he, one devotee, he was an expert book distributor. Prabhupada said he is an incarnation of book distribution. So, uh, he used to only sell books to men. He would never approach women to sell books. He would just sell books to men. Sometimes you get these young men you know, they go out and they only sell books to women. They only go to the women to sell books. That's not very good. Men should approach the men better. You know, you go to women, not, it's not, very, nice, not very suitable. So you have to be a little careful. When you sell book, so women also, when women go out for book distribution, they should also approach the women. It's better if they go to the women rather than just go to men. Let them go to let the women go to the women and sell books and cultivate the women. The ladies can cultivate the other ladies, and the men cultivate the men. That's how it's supposed to be. 
go to women, not very suitable. If you want to keep your Krishna consciousness, these are some principles to think about. Hmm. All right, any other questions? So we're hearing Queen Kunti offering her prayers to Krishna. These prayers are very meaningful, very important for us. You want to study them and memorize them, learn the slokas, recite regularly. Yes, Prabhu, you have a question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, generally, I've seen that for grahasthas, in the city life it is very difficult to, you know, means, uh, have a regulated life. It's very polluted environment in the city life. So my question is that uh, for a grahastha, so Prabhupada gave Varnashrama system actually, that he told that city life is hellish life, so we should have a Varnashrama system where we are away from this city culture and all those things. So I just wanted to ask you that uh, how to regulate their life so that they are advancing in spiritual life. Well, how do you regulate your life? You should regulate your life just like we do in the temple. You want to have regulated life as we have a schedule in our temple. You should you stay at home and also have a schedule according to your convenience. You know, you try to wake up earlier in the morning and chant japa and worship and just like we do a morning program, you can also do in your home in the family life. That is actually Grihasta Ashram. The Grihasta Ashram is for cultivating spiritual advancement. And so it's not that because I'm in family life I'm fallen. No. You don't need to rem you don't need to be fallen. You can be in family life and you can be a very advanced devotee. Grihe tako vani tako shabahari boli dako. It does not matter if you're in the householder life or if you're in the renounced life. If you're the devotee of Krishna, then we want your association. So you're in the householder life, you have to get the family organized and you want to have a Krishna conscious atmosphere. You should have an altar and you should offer some worship there. And you should have Prabhupada's books there, and you should read the books, and in this way, you should cultivate your Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada stayed at home. Prabhupada never stayed in the temple. Prabhupada stayed at home with his family, with his children. He had five. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wasn't staying in the temple. He was with his family. He had many children, 12 children. But he brought them all up in Krishna consciousness. So we should not think that, oh, I'm in family life, I have no hope. No. Wherever you are, you have to tell people, you have to be Krishna conscious. We live in the city, city is hellish, but Prabhupada lived in the cities. Prabhupada went to New York. He lived there, it's a very hellish city, New York. Prabhupada was there and he was Krishna conscious. He was cooking, he was offering to Krishna and he was still reading and writing and preaching. So we say Narayana Parat, Narayana Parat Tasve, na, na, Narayana Parasarve Nakutaschanya Vibhyate Swarga Apavarga Narakesh Vapitu Yata Darshana. For a devotee who is surrendered to the Lord, there's no difference between heaven and hell and liberation. It's all the same. Whether, whether you're in the city or in the countryside, it doesn't make a difference.
pure Krishna conscious. But we have to be Krishna conscious. You have to read the books, you have to chant, and you have to worship the deity. We have to follow the rules and regulations. It is not a question of, oh, I'm in the city, it's hellish. Yes, we know it's hellish, but we can remain transcendental by practice of sadhana bhakti. You do the sadhana, you chant, and you read the books. It doesn't matter where you are. It's not just we go in the countryside and everything will be beautiful. No, there's a, it's a lot of difficulties in the countryside also. In the countryside, you still have to wake up in the morning. <laughs> you know, you can't think, I'm in the countryside, it would be so easy to be Krishna conscious. No, wherever you go, the same problems will be there. But we have to understand how to overcome the obstacles by good practice of Krishna consciousness. Be a strict devotee. And Prabhupada was always reading the books and thinking about Krishna consciousness. He couldn't chant all of his rounds at one point. He would chant four rounds first in the morning. Then he'd chant four rounds after breakfast. Then he'd chant four rounds after lunch. Then he'd chant four rounds after supper. And this way he would chant 16 rounds. So in a day he could finish his 16 rounds. Not that you have to do them all early in the morning, but he would get them done in the course of the day. Okay, Hare Krishna. Of course, devotees in the temple, when we live here in the temple, it's a great opportunity, it's very special. We have the opportunity to practice Krishna consciousness. And what we learn here, and then we, when we go away from the temple, when we, we continue that practice. You get married, you become a householder, you have a home, you have children, but you keep Krishna consciousness. You have the deity, you can have a deity, or you can have an altar with just pictures, and we have to do arti, and you have to have kirtan, and you should invite people to your home. That is also part of being a householder, that you bring devotees to your home and you have kirtan and you have classes, you make some program, invite friends to come to your home and teach them about Krishna consciousness. So there's grihasta and there's grihamedi. Don't be grihamedi. Grihamedi only thinking about their sense gratification. We want bigger house, we need bigger car, we want more money. That is Grihamedi life. Just simply envying, being envious of others. But Grihasta is a spiritual ashr ashram. It's for making spiritual progress. And you can see in the Mahajans, from the Mahajans, maybe half of them were Grihastas. Half were Brahmachari, half were Grihastas. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu. Swayambhu Brahma. Is he a Brahmachari? No. Narada, is he a Brahmachari? Yes. Shambhu, is he a Brahmachari? No. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu. Komar, Kapilo Manu, Komara, are they brahmacharis? Huh? Komara? Komaras are not brahmacharis? Oh, I'm asking him, he was saying. <laughs> Komar, yes, Komars are brahmachari. Kapilo, Kapila is brahmachari? Lord Kapila, brahmachari, yes, he has a mother. <laughs> but he didn't marry. He's a brahmachari. Kapila. Manu. Manu says, Brahma, Manu is Grihasta. Manu's wife Grihas, is a Grihasta. And then Pralado Janako Bhishmo, Pralad Maharaj. Grihasta. Janaka. 
Bhishma, and Bali, Bali Maharaj, and Vyasaki, Vyasaki Sukadeva Goswami, and Vayam, Vayam means I myself, Yamaraj. Yamaraj? Grihastha, yeah. So like that you can see Mahajans, they're great souls, but some are Brahmachari and some are Grihastas. Doesn't make a difference. There can also be great souls. And Prabhupada talks, he writes about, he said there are uh, the devotees in the Krishna consciousness movement. They may be working in the office or in the factory, but they, they're donating their hard-earned salary for the service of Krishna. He said they're all renounced sannyasis. Although they're working in the office or in the factory, but they're contributing to the Krishna consciousness movement. So he said they're as good as sannyasis. So it's not a question of ashram. We don't make distinction. We want to see how much you're serving Krishna. How much are you chanting? How much are you reading? How much are you worshipping Krishna? We want to see how much you're actually dedicating to the service of Krishna. So we encourage everyone in this way. We don't say, oh, you're a householder, you cannot get initiated. No, you can also be initiated. You can also accept a spiritual master. And you can also go on and preach and become a, a, a guru. We have spirit.